Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Well, uh, would you trust me? Come on, just trust me. Well, I guess it just depends on how well you know me and if, if you believe that I am trustworthy. But I'd like to talk about that word trust tonight. Um, of course, the Bible is full of verses that uh, tell us that salvation <clears throat> is received as a free gift from Jesus when we believe in him or when we believe on him or if we have faith in him. <clears throat> but also, uh, the Bible tells us that we are saved by trusting Jesus. And th these, these words are, are similar. But they, they do not all have exactly the same meanings. There are some differences, even if they're subtle differences. But I'd like to uh, focus on the idea of salvation um, by trusting Jesus. But let's look at a, a definition that I found in the dictionary. I think that is uh, perfect for uh, the gospel. It says, trust refers to a situation characterized by the following aspects. One party is willing to rely on the actions of another party. The situation is directed to the future. In addition, the trustor abandons control over the actions performed by the trustee. Now, I know that this definition here does not have a a chapter and verse in front of it. It's not scripture, but it sure uh, explains the uh, this relationship that we have with our Savior uh, that 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 actually saves us. Uh, so let me analyze a little more closely. It says uh, one party is willing to rely on the actions of another party. The situation is directed to the future. Uh, well, I'd, I'd say that um, uh, when it comes to salvation, we are um, asked and we're expected to, even re we're required to uh, trust that what Jesus has already done for us in the past and also trust uh, what Jesus has promised to do for us in the future. But... The idea of one party relying upon another party is is what really makes uh, this uh, uh, very, very important that you get that. We are relying on Jesus, what he's done for us already and what he promises for us in the future. We're relying on that. We're trusting Jesus to do what he said he would do. Well, uh, and what is that? Well, first of all, he, what has he already done? Uh, we, we trust that uh, the account in the Bible is true, that uh, Jesus did die on a cross, and, and his death on that cross did serve as a full payment for all of our sins. So I'm trusting that Jesus did that for me. Uh, also, uh, Jesus promises in the scriptures that when we do trust him for our salvation, that, that there are certain promises for the future that we can also trust him to perform for us. Um, one is the bodily resurrection. Uh, we're told in the Bible that one day we will be raised bodily from the dead and have glorified bodies that never get old or sick or die again perfect bodies, similar to uh, uh, the body Jesus had uh, after his bodily resurrection. So that's a promise uh, Jesus has made to us. And the question is, do you trust Jesus to do what he said he would do? Uh, the other promise that's important to understand is that, that uh, uh, accompanying this new body uh, is uh, eternal life. 
it wouldn't do us any good if we got a brand new wonderful body and then we just died and, and uh, what does that accomplish? So uh, we have a glorified perfect body and it will live forever and ever and ever. It's, it, it's eternal life that we're promised. And we're given that as a, as a free gift from Jesus <clears throat> because we've trusted what he said. We've trusted his promises. Uh, and then the definition says, in addition, the trust or abandons control over the actions performed by the trustee. So in this case, uh, I am the trust or the one who's doing the trusting. Uh, Jesus is the trustee, the one who is being trusted. And I'm abandoning control. I'm giving up all, all my control over to Jesus. I'm just trusting that he's going to do it all. I don't need to do anything. If I tried to do anything, all it would do is mess it up. So I'm just going to trust that, that all, all control is given over to him to, to do what he said he could do. So I not only trust that he's able to do it, as he said, but I trust that he's faithful to do what he said he would do for me. So I, I think that definition uh, really uh, goes along perfectly with what we find in the scriptures. Uh, now there's a, the word trust, um, here's a few examples of the word trust in the scriptures, and, and we find it in, in a couple of times in 2 Corinthians and also here in Ephesians, it says, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who del delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us, in whom ye also trusted. After that, ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So uh, here, uh, these verses, of course, the subject is, is salvation and, and this uh, uh, promise of a, a resurrection. Uh, and it says that we are trusting Jesus for all of this. Now, the thing I like about trust uh, is that um, it's, it's pretty clear to me that a person can exercise free will and make a decision to trust or make a decision to not trust. Uh, a, a kind of an illustration of this uh, is that movie Indiana Jones. Um, I think it was probably the first Indiana Jones movie, I believe. But uh, he's trying to escape and, and he reaches a point where he's at the edge of a, a cliff and he needs to get way over to the other side, but there's a deep canyon. So there's no way to get across that he can see. However, he was told that he can just simply walk across it, and but you can't see the bridge, but there's a bridge there. So he's, he's basically being expected to trust that what he was told is true, to trust that, that even though he cannot see the bridge, that there really is a bridge and he can just simply walk across it. But you have to, he has to trust uh, the, the, the one that told him, just walk across, trust me, trust me, walk across it, even though you can't see the bridge, it's there. Uh, <laughs> so Indiana Jones it was in a position to make a decision. He could have said, I don't trust the person that told me that. So it really boils down to, do you trust that person? Particularly in this example, because if he's wrong, he'll step off the cliff and fall into a bottomless pit to his death. So um, he has to be pretty confident to uh, take that step of faith. Uh, but it is a free will decision. He does have the ability to decide, I'm going to trust him and take the step, or I will not trust what he says, and I'm not going to take that step. So 
Um, in that way, I, I like the word trust uh, Jesus for your salvation um, because it's, it's just simply a question of, of um, coming to the, the point where uh, you are going to put your destiny, your, your fate, you're giving control over to Jesus, letting him handle it all and um, trusting him to do it for you. Uh, in my street preaching, I had a 12 foot tall banner and I had different things on the banner at different times. Sometimes I had a lot of wor words and Bible verses, but I decided I wanted to make the sign um, uh, so that people who are far away can read it and, and uh, get something out of it. Even if they're just driving by for a second, they can see that banner and, and get the message. Uh, so it required that I reduce the message down to as few words as possible so that the print could be very large font. And so I, uh, I decided that I could use two words. And on one side of the banner, I had Jesus saves, which is true. Jesus saves. Jesus saves everybody who uh, um, believes in him to be the, their savior, is relying on him. But on the other side of the banner, I put the words trust Jesus. And uh, I believe those are probably... The, the two best words, if I had to narrow it all down and say, okay, you're not allowed to tell anybody anything more than two words. I don't know what words you would choose, but for me, if I'm limited to two words, it would be trust Jesus. Um, I think if most people understand what it means to trust someone. And so, uh, and most people know about Jesus. They may not have a perfect understanding about about uh, him, uh, or let's say uh, they don't understand the identity of Jesus as well as those of us who've spent a lifetime studying about Jesus. But, but I would say, at least in America, almost everybody you'll encounter has an idea who Jesus is from the movies and the books and maybe reading the Bible themselves. So they they know that this it's this person that uh, is reported to be the one who died on a cross to pay for our sins. Uh, that's that's the one. Uh, so the question is, will you trust him? Will you trust him for your your fate? Your uh, uh, however it's going to play out for you in the afterlife. Give it all over to Jesus. Just trust him, rely completely on him. Well, uh, that's that's the gospel in a nutshell. But uh, I don't know. The question is, will you trust him? Thank you for watching, and I look forward to your comments. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.